In a small town, a late-night phone call turns a young woman's life into a terrifying mystery. Tonight's sleep story takes you on a journey to find out what really happened. Are you ready to dive into the story and solve the mystery with me? The first rays of dawn crept through the gaps in the curtains, casting a muted glow over the room. Angela, cocooned in the warmth of her bed, stirred, her fingers instinctively moving to her belly. The baby, as if sensing her mother's touch, responded with a gentle kick. It was a dance they had grown accustomed to, a silent conversation between mother and child. The room was filled with the soft hum of the old ceiling fan, its blades cutting through the thick morning air. Angela's breathing synchronized with its rhythm, slow and deliberate. The world outside seemed distant, as if she and the baby were the only inhabitants of this quiet universe. She let her mind wander, drifting into a daydream. The walls of the room faded, replaced by visions of a sunlit meadow. She saw herself, older, holding the hand of a little child with curly hair and bright eyes, both laughing as they chased butterflies. The child's laughter echoed in her ears, a sound so pure and full of joy. But as quickly as the vision appeared, a shadow crept in, darkening the edges of her dream. A cold breeze swept through the meadow, making the grass sway violently. Angela felt a shiver run down her spine, the dream's warmth replaced by an unsettling chill. She tried to hold on to the image of the child, but it slipped away, leaving her in the cold embrace of the shadow. Suddenly, a sharp kick from the baby jolted Angela back to reality. She took a deep breath, trying to shake off the remnants of the dream. The room, with its familiar surroundings, offered comfort. She whispered words of reassurance to the baby, her voice soft and soothing. As she slowly got out of bed, Angela couldn't shake off the unease that lingered. She decided to start her day, hoping that the routines of life would dispel the shadows of her morning dream. The town of Clinton had a way of holding on to its secrets, but the local grocery store was where those secrets often came to light. The old wooden floors creaked under Angela's feet as she pushed her cart, the sound echoing through the aisles. The store, with its dim lighting and shelves packed with goods, felt like a relic from another era. As she reached for a can of soup, she heard familiar voices whispering excitedly from the next aisle. She recognized them instantly, Martha and Sue, two of her closest friends since childhood. Curiosity peaked, Angela rounded the corner, her face breaking into a warm smile. Angela, Martha exclaimed, her eyes widening in surprise. We were just talking about you. Sue, always the more reserved of the two, gave Angela a knowing look. Good things, of course, she added with a wink. Angela laughed, feeling a rush of warmth. What's the latest gossip? she teased, leaning in conspiratorially. Martha, never one to hold back, began recounting the latest town scandal involving the mayor's son and a mysterious woman from out of town. As the story unfolded, Angela felt a growing unease. The tale was eerily similar to her morning dream, the details aligning in a way that sent shivers down her spine. Trying to shake off the feeling, Angela steered the conversation towards happier topics. The baby's been so active lately, she shared, placing a hand on her belly. I can't wait to meet him. Sue's eyes softened. It's going to be such a blessing, she murmured, touching Angela's arm gently. But as the three friends chatted, the weight of Angela's dream lingered, casting a shadow over the otherwise cheerful conversation. The grocery store, with its whispered secrets and old world charm, felt more oppressive than ever. As Angela made her way to the checkout, she couldn't help but glance over her shoulder, half expecting to see the dark figure from her dream lurking in the shadows. The town's gossip, usually a source of amusement, now felt like a forewarning of things to come. The sun had dipped below the horizon, casting the town in a dusky hue. Angela's home, 
A quaint cottage nestled at the edge of Clinton was bathed in the soft glow of porch lights. The chirping of crickets and the distant hum of cars created a serene backdrop for the evening. Inside, the living room was alive with chatter and laughter. Angela's friends, a close-knit group from their school days, had gathered for one of their regular get-togethers. The room was filled with the comforting aroma of freshly baked cookies and brewed coffee. Jenna, with her wild curls and infectious laughter, was recounting a hilarious incident from their high school days. The group erupted in laughter, the sound echoing through the house. Angela, seated on the couch, her hand resting on her belly, smiled, her eyes glistening with nostalgia. As the evening wore on, the group delved deeper into their shared past, each memory more cherished than the last. But amidst the laughter, Angela felt an undercurrent of unease. Every shadow in the room seemed to stretch a little longer, every creak of the floorboards a tad louder. She tried to push the feeling aside, attributing it to her earlier dream and the town's gossip. But as the clock ticked on, the atmosphere in the room grew heavier. The laughter began to feel forced, the stories tinged with an unspoken tension. Suddenly, a gust of wind rattled the windows, causing the lights to flicker. The room plunged into momentary darkness, and an icy chill swept through. Angela's heart raced, the baby kicking in response to her rising anxiety. The lights returned, revealing the concerned faces of her friends. Maybe it's time to call it a night, Jenna suggested, her voice shaky. Angela nodded, grateful for the suggestion. As her friends gathered their things and said their goodbyes, she felt a weight lift off her shoulders. But the unease remained, a lingering presence that refused to be ignored. She locked the doors and checked the windows, trying to shake off the feeling of being watched. As she settled into bed, she hoped that sleep would bring relief from the day's unsettling events. But the night had other plans. The streets of Clinton were bathed in the silvery glow of the moon, casting long, dancing shadows on the pavement. Angela, wrapped in a light jacket, walked briskly towards the town's lone payphone, a relic from a bygone era. The night was still, save for the distant hoot of an owl and the rhythmic tapping of her shoes against the cobblestone. She felt an inexplicable urge to hear Rob's voice, a comforting anchor in the sea of unease that had enveloped her day. The payphone stood at the corner of Elm Street, its metallic frame gleaming under the dim streetlight. As Angela approached, she noticed a green truck parked a little distance away, its engine idling softly. She paid it no mind, attributing its presence to a late-night traveler or a local finishing up some work. Slipping a coin into the slot, she dialed Rob's number, the rhythmic pulse of the dial tone filling her ears. As the phone rang, she absentmindedly glanced around, her gaze once again drawn to the green truck. This time, she noticed a figure inside, obscured by the shadows but unmistakably watching her. A shiver ran down her spine, but before she could react, Rob's voice came through, warm and familiar. Hey, Angie, he greeted, his tone light. Rob, she replied, trying to keep her voice steady. Just wanted to hear your voice. It's been a strange day. They chatted briefly, Angela doing her best to keep the conversation casual, all the while acutely aware of the truck's presence. She mentioned the odd weather, the gathering with friends, deliberately omitting the unsettling events that had transpired. But as the minutes ticked by, the truck's presence became more oppressive. Angela could feel the weight of the unseen driver's gaze, a predatory intensity that made her skin crawl. She was about to wrap up the call when she noticed the truck's door creak open. A figure stepped out, the dim light revealing a man, unkempt and rugged. He began to approach, a flashlight in hand, its beam darting around as if searching for something. Panic surged through Angela. Rob, she whispered urgently, there's someone here. I don't like the look of him. Rob's voice, now laced with concern, came through. Stay calm, Angie. I'm on my way. But as Angela clutched the receiver, the man's footsteps grew louder, his intentions becoming terrifyingly clear. The stage was set, and the night's sinister dance was about to begin. 
The night air was thick with tension, each sound amplified in the stillness. Angela clutched the payphone, Rob's voice a lifeline in the enveloping darkness. Their conversation, initially filled with the mundane details of their day, was a welcome distraction from the unease that had plagued Angela. But as they spoke, a distant rumble grew louder, drawing her attention. The green truck, which she had dismissed earlier, now circled the block, its movements deliberate and predatory. Each pass seemed closer, the truck's headlights casting an eerie glow that briefly illuminated the surroundings before plunging them back into shadow. Angela tried to focus on Rob's voice, his tales of a minor mishap at work, a funny anecdote shared by a colleague, but the truck's relentless circling gnawed at her, its presence an unspoken threat. The laughter in her voice sounded hollow, forced. Rob, she began, hesitating. Do you remember that green truck from the Jenkins farm? He paused, sensing the change in her tone. Yeah, why? It's here, she whispered, her voice barely audible. Circling around, something's not right. Rob's concern was palpable. Stay on the line, Angie. Just keep talking to me. But as the truck made another pass, its engines growl more menacing than before, Angela's light-hearted banter was overshadowed by a growing sense of dread. The world seemed to narrow, the truck's presence looming larger with each circle, casting a dark pall over what should have been a simple, comforting conversation. The weight of the night pressed in, the truck's eerie presence a harbinger of the darkness to come. The truck's engine cut abruptly, plunging the street into an unsettling silence. Angela's heart raced, each beat echoing loudly in her ears. The door of the truck creaked open, and a tall figure emerged, his silhouette barely discernible in the dim light. He approached with a slow, deliberate gait, each step measured and heavy. Angela could make out his features now, a scruffy beard, unkempt hair, and glasses that glinted eerily. His clothes were stained, and he wore a tattered hat that cast a shadow over his eyes. Evening, miss, he drawled, his voice gravelly and deep. The flashlight in his hand cast an uneven beam, its light dancing erratically. Angela swallowed hard, trying to muster courage. Can I help you? she asked, her voice betraying a hint of trepidation. The man tilted his head, studying her intently. Just looking for my dog, he replied, his gaze never leaving hers. Seen him around? Angela shook her head, her fingers gripping the phone tighter. No, I haven't. Sorry. The man took a step closer, invading her personal space. The scent of tobacco and stale sweat wafted from him, making Angela's stomach churn. Pretty late for a call, isn't it? He remarked, his tone dripping with insinuation. She nodded, eager to end the conversation. Just checking in with my fiancé. He's on his way. The man's eyes narrowed, assessing her words. Is that so? He mused, his gaze lingering a moment too long. Angela felt a surge of panic. Yes, he should be here any minute, she blurted, hoping the mention of another's imminent arrival would deter him. The man seemed to consider this, his expression unreadable. After what felt like an eternity, he grunted, Better get going then. Don't want to keep him waiting. With that, he turned and ambled back to his truck, leaving Angela trembling in his wake. The weight of the encounter pressed down on her, the man's unsettling presence a stark reminder of the dangers that lurked in the shadows. The truck's engine roared to life, its growl echoing ominously in the still night. Angela, still clutching the phone, tried to steady her breathing, but her heart raced uncontrollably. The man's brief interaction had left an indelible mark, a creeping sense of dread that refused to dissipate. She could hear Rob's voice, distant and tinny, calling out to her from the other end of the line. Angie, Angie, are you there? Talk to me. But Angela's focus was on the truck. Instead of driving away, it remained stationary, its headlights piercing the darkness, casting long, grotesque shadows. The man, now back in the driver's seat, seemed to be watching her, waiting. The atmosphere grew thick with tension. Every rustle of leaves, every distant sound seemed amplified, adding to Angela's growing panic. She felt trapped, 
caught in a nightmarish scenario that threatened to spiral out of control. Rob, she whispered, her voice trembling. He's still here, watching me. Rob's voice, filled with alarm, crackled through. Stay calm, Angie. I'm almost there. Just keep talking to me. But as Angela tried to respond, the man revved the truck's engine, its deafening roar drowning out her words. The vehicle began to inch closer, its approach deliberate and menacing. Angela's mind raced, searching for an escape route, a way out of this tightening noose. But the payphone's cord tethered her, and the surrounding darkness felt suffocating. The man's intentions were becoming terrifyingly clear. This wasn't a chance encounter or a simple misunderstanding. There was a malevolence in his actions, a dark purpose that sent icy tendrils of fear snaking down Angela's spine. She tried to speak, to shout for help, but her voice wavered, choked by the overwhelming terror. The distance between her and the approaching truck closed rapidly, the boundary between safety and danger blurring. The world seemed to narrow to this singular moment, the impending threat casting a shadow over everything. The truck's headlights, once distant, now bore down on Angela, blinding her with their intensity. The world around her seemed to blur, the boundaries of reality distorting under the weight of her terror. The phone, slick with sweat in her grip, became her only lifeline to the outside world. Rob's voice, frantic and urgent, pierced through the haze. Angie, run, get out of there. But before she could react, the man was upon her. His hands, rough and cold, clamped around her wrist, wrenching the phone from her grasp. Angela's scream, raw and primal, echoed into the night, a desperate plea for help. The struggle was fierce. Angela, fueled by adrenaline and the instinct to protect her unborn child, fought with a strength she didn't know she possessed. But the man, larger and more powerful, began to gain the upper hand. On the other end of the line, Rob's world shattered. The sounds of the struggle, Angela's cries, and the man's grunts of effort filled his ears, painting a horrifying picture. He pressed the accelerator, his car roaring in response, but the distance seemed insurmountable. And then, as suddenly as it began, there was silence. The line went dead, leaving Rob in a void of uncertainty and dread. The absence of sound was deafening, a chilling testament to the violence that had just unfolded. The night, once filled with the promise of a simple conversation between lovers, had turned into a nightmare. The darkness, no longer a benign backdrop, now held secrets and horrors beyond comprehension. The engine of Rob's car roared to life, its sound a stark contrast to the chilling silence that had consumed the phone line moments earlier. The dashboard's lights cast a pale glow on his face, highlighting the raw fear etched into his features. Every second felt like an eternity, every heartbeat a deafening drum in his ears. The streets of Clinton, usually so familiar and comforting, now seemed like a labyrinth of shadows and uncertainty. Rob's hands gripped the steering wheel, knuckles white, as he navigated the turns and bends with a recklessness born of desperation. His mind raced, playing out a thousand scenarios, each more horrifying than the last. The image of Angela, alone and vulnerable, haunted him, driving him to push the car's limits. The tires screeched in protest, leaving a trail of rubber on the asphalt. Houses and trees blurred past in a dizzying whirl, their shapes distorted by the speed. The wind howled, a mournful lament that mirrored Rob's own anguish. He could feel the weight of the night pressing in, the darkness a tangible force that threatened to consume him. As he neared the payphone's location, his heart sank. The once bustling corner of Elm Street was now eerily deserted, the payphone standing sentinel-like, its receiver dangling ominously. The green truck, the harbinger of the night's horrors, was nowhere in sight. Rob slammed the brakes, the car skidding to a halt. He leaped out, his eyes scanning the surroundings, searching for any sign of Angela. But all that greeted him was silence, broken only by the distant chirping of crickets and the soft rustling of leaves. Despair threatened to overwhelm him. The payphone, once a symbol of connection and comfort, now stood as a grim reminder of the night's events. 
The ground around it seemed to pulse with a malevolent energy, the very air thick with tension. Rob's voice, hoarse and broken, called out into the void. Angela, he cried, the name echoing back to him, a haunting refrain. The race against time had brought him to this desolate spot, but the true battle, it seemed, was only just beginning. Just as despair threatened to consume Rob, a distant rumble pierced the stillness. The sound grew louder, more distinct, until the unmistakable roar of the green truck's engine filled the air. It emerged from a side street, its headlights cutting through the darkness like twin blades. Rob's heart leaped into his throat as he caught a glimpse of a figure in the passenger seat. Angela. Her face was obscured by the shadows, but her muffled cries reached his ears, a desperate plea that sent a jolt of adrenaline coursing through his veins. Without a second thought, Rob jumped back into his car, slamming the accelerator to the floor. The chase was on. The green truck weaved through the streets of Clinton, its driver displaying a reckless abandon that spoke of dark intentions. Rob, driven by a mix of fear and determination, kept pace, his car's engine growling in response to the challenge. The streets became a blur of motion, houses and trees merging into a kaleidoscope of colors and shapes. Every turn, every twist, was a test of wills, a high-stakes game of cat and mouse. Angela's cries grew more frantic, her voice rising above the cacophony of engines and screeching tires. Rob could see her hands pressed against the truck's window, her fingers splayed in a silent scream for help. The distance between the two vehicles closed, then widened, a dance of metal and speed. Rob's focus narrowed to the truck's taillights, their red glow a beacon in the night. But as the chase continued, a sinking realization began to take hold. The truck, newer and more powerful, had the advantage. Rob's old car, for all its heart and determination, was being pushed to its limits. The gap between predator and prey grew, the truck's roar a mocking reminder of the distance that separated Rob from Angela. But he refused to give up, his resolve fueled by love and desperation. The heart-stopping encounter, a race against fate and time, hurtled forward the outcome uncertain and the stakes higher than ever. The night air rushed past Rob, a cold reminder of the relentless chase. His car, a trusty companion through countless journeys, now seemed to groan and protest with every push of the accelerator. The dashboard lights flickered ominously, casting a ghostly pallor over the worn interior. A sudden jolt, followed by a grinding noise, made Rob's heart skip a beat. The transmission, already strained to its limits, was faltering. He could feel the gears slipping, the once smooth transition between speeds now a jerky, unpredictable dance. No, not now, he whispered, his voice tinged with desperation. He willed the car forward, urging it to defy its age and limitations. But with every passing second, the green truck pulled further ahead, its taillights becoming fainter, a receding beacon in the abyss of the night. Rob's grip on the steering wheel tightened, his knuckles white. The car's engine whined, a mournful cry that echoed his own sense of despair. The road ahead seemed to stretch endlessly, its twists and turns mocking his efforts. The scent of burning oil filled the air, a pungent reminder of the car's mechanical betrayal. Rob glanced at the temperature gauge, its needle inching dangerously into the red. Steam began to rise from the hood, obscuring his vision and adding to the mounting challenges. He rolled down the window, the cold air stinging his face, but offering a brief respite from the growing heat inside the car. The sounds of the night, once drowned out by the roar of engines, now became eerily pronounced. The chirping of crickets, the distant hoot of an owl, all seemed to mock his faltering pursuit. The weight of the situation pressed down on Rob, the culmination of a night filled with dread and uncertainty. His trusty car, once a symbol of freedom and adventure, had betrayed him at the worst possible moment. As the gap between him and the green truck widened, the reality of his situation began to sink in. The chase, it seemed, was nearing its tragic conclusion. The vast expanse of the road ahead seemed to mock Rob, its winding path a cruel reminder of the chase's futility.
The green truck, once so close he could almost touch it, now seemed like a distant mirage, its form shimmering and elusive in the moonlight. Angela's cries, which had once pierced the night with their urgency, now seemed faint, carried away by the wind. Each passing second stretched into an eternity, the distance between them growing, the hope in Rob's heart dimming. The world around him blurred, the trees and houses merging into a monochrome tapestry of despair. The rhythmic thud of his heart, once a source of strength, now felt like a heavy weight, its beats slower, more labored. A sense of helplessness washed over him, the realization that he might never see Angela again, never hold her, never share another moment of laughter or love. The memories of their time together played in his mind, a bittersweet montage of happier days. The wind howled, its mournful cry echoing Rob's own sense of loss. The road ahead seemed endless, its twists and turns a labyrinth of despair. The green truck's taillights, once a beacon of hope, now seemed like distant stars, unreachable and cold. Rob's grip on the steering wheel loosened, his resolve waning. The weight of the night, with its shadows and secrets, pressed down on him, threatening to consume him whole. But deep down, a flicker of hope remained, a stubborn ember that refused to be extinguished. Angela's face, her smile, her laughter, played in his mind, a reminder of what was at stake. With renewed determination, Rob pressed on, the distance between them a challenge to be overcome, a test of wills. The night was far from over, and hope, however faint, still lingered. The green truck's engine growled as it veered off the main road, its tires crunching on the gravelly path that led into the dense woods. The trees, ancient sentinels with gnarled branches, loomed overhead, their canopies forming a thick tapestry that blocked out the moonlight. The world outside was plunged into an inky blackness, the kind of darkness that seemed to swallow everything whole. Inside the truck, the atmosphere was thick with tension. The only sound was the labored breathing of its occupants and the occasional creak of the vehicle's suspension as it navigated the uneven terrain. The man, his face obscured by the dim light, gripped the steering wheel with a determination that belied his sinister intent. Angela, bound and gagged in the passenger seat, could only watch in growing horror as the truck delved deeper into the woods. Every bump, every jolt sent waves of pain through her body, but it was the oppressive isolation of their surroundings that truly terrified her. The woods seemed to close in around them, the trees whispering secrets to one another, their leaves rustling in a language only they understood. It felt as if the forest itself was complicit in the man's dark plans, its shadows hiding a myriad of horrors. After what felt like hours, the truck came to a jarring halt. The engine sputtered and died, leaving an unsettling silence in its wake. The man turned to Angela, his eyes cold and calculating, a predator assessing its prey. Outside, the woods seemed to hold their breath, the stillness punctuated only by the distant hoot of an owl. The truck, now a dark silhouette against the backdrop of the trees, stood as a grim testament to the unfolding nightmare. Angela's heart raced, each beat echoing the dread that consumed her. The isolation, the darkness, the chilling intent of her captor, all combined to create a sense of hopelessness that was almost palpable. The woods, with their secrets and shadows, had become a prison, a place where the line between reality and nightmare blurred, where hope seemed like a distant memory. Bound and trapped in the stifling confines of the truck, Angela's mind became a whirlwind of memories and emotions. The darkness around her seemed to amplify her thoughts, each one playing out in vivid detail. She remembered the first time she met Rob, the way his eyes had sparkled with mischief and warmth. Their first date, a simple walk in the park, where they had talked for hours, losing track of time. The sound of his laughter, the touch of his hand, the promises of a future filled with love and happiness. These memories clashed violently with her current reality. The cold, hard metal of the truck's interior, the rough ropes that bound her, the stifling gag that stifled her cries. 
the looming presence of the man, a dark shadow that threatened to snuff out all the light in her world. Tears streamed down Angela's face as despair threatened to consume her. The weight of her situation, the hopelessness of her predicament, pressed down on her, making it hard to breathe. The memories of happier times, once a source of comfort, now felt like a cruel taunt, a reminder of all that she stood to lose. But amidst the torrent of emotions, a singular thought emerged, clear and unwavering. Her unborn child, the life growing inside her, a beacon of hope in the darkest of times, the promise of a future, of love and happiness, even in the face of overwhelming odds. Angela clung to this thought, letting it anchor her, giving her the strength to endure. The memories of her past, the love she shared with Rob, the promise of their future, all became a lifeline, a source of strength in her darkest hour. But even as she clung to these memories, the grim reality of her situation loomed large. The woods, with their oppressive silence, the truck with its dark secrets, the man with his sinister intent, all threatened to shatter her fragile hold on hope. The battle between memories and despair raged on, a tug of war for Angela's soul as she faced the most harrowing ordeal of her life. The truck's door creaked open, the sound slicing through the night like a knife. The man's silhouette loomed over Angela, his intentions clear in the predatory glint of his eyes. But as he reached for her, something within Angela ignited. A primal, fierce determination fueled by the love for her unborn child. With a sudden burst of strength, she kicked out, her foot connecting with the man's chest. He stumbled back, momentarily caught off guard. Seizing the opportunity, Angela wriggled, using every ounce of her strength to loosen the ropes that bound her wrists. The man recovered quickly, lunging at her with renewed fury. But Angela was ready. She swung the loosened ropes like a whip, the rough fibers catching him across the face. He howled in pain, his hands flying to his eyes. The woods around them seemed to come alive, the trees whispering encouragement, the wind cheering her on. Every ounce of Angela's being was focused on survival, on protecting the life growing inside her. The man, blinded and enraged, swung wildly, his fists cutting through the air. Angela dodged and weaved, her movements fueled by adrenaline and desperation. The confines of the truck became an arena, the stakes higher than ever. With a sudden swift motion, Angela managed to free one of her hands completely. She reached down, fingers searching, and found a discarded wrench on the truck's floor. Gripping it tightly, she swung with all her might, the metal connecting with a sickening thud. The man crumpled, his body hitting the ground with a heavy thud. But Angela knew she couldn't afford to let her guard down. She scrambled out of the truck, her eyes darting around, searching for a way out. But the man wasn't finished. With a guttural roar, he lunged at her once more, his fingers clawing, his eyes filled with malice. The two collided, a tangle of limbs and raw emotion. The struggle was fierce, each blow, each grasp, a testament to their respective wills. Angela, driven by love and the promise of a future, the man, by dark, twisted desires. The night bore witness to their final, desperate struggle, the outcome uncertain, the stakes immeasurably high. The woods, which had seemed so alive during their struggle, now fell into a deep, mournful silence. The trees, once whispering encouragement, now stood as silent witnesses to the tragedy that had unfolded. The wind, which had cheered Angela on, now carried with it a heavy, sorrowful sigh. Angela lay on the forest floor, her body battered and bruised, her breaths coming in shallow, ragged gasps. The man, defeated and broken, lay a few feet away, his once menacing presence now reduced to a pitiful heap. The moon, which had been hidden behind a thick blanket of clouds, now emerged, casting a pale, silvery glow over the scene. The light illuminated Angela's face, revealing a mix of pain, exhaustion, and a heartbreaking resignation. She tried to move, to call out, but her strength had been sapped, her voice reduced to a mere whisper. 
The weight of the night, with its shadows and secrets, pressed down on her, making it hard to breathe, hard to think. Tears streamed down her face, not of pain or fear, but of loss. The memories of her time with Rob, the promise of their future, the life growing inside her all seemed to slip away, carried off by the wind. The night, which had started with so much hope and promise, now bore witness to a heart-wrenching tragedy. The woods, with their ancient wisdom and timeless beauty, stood as a testament to the fragility of life, the unpredictability of fate. As the minutes ticked by, Angela's breaths grew shallower, her heartbeat slower. The world around her seemed to blur, the boundaries of reality fading away. The pain, the fear, the despair, all melted away, replaced by a deep, peaceful silence. The night, with its eerie stillness, had reclaimed its own, marking the tragic end of Angela's journey. As our story comes to a close, let the lull of this soothing ambiance continue to cradle you further into your journey of calmness and rest. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your relaxation and sleep routine tonight. Remember, each day brings a new story, and each night brings a fresh chance to regenerate, to dream, and to become more of who you are. Good night, dear listener, until our next story, sleep well and dream beautifully. <laughs>